see some of you in your faces right now. You're ready to quit, but you can't. All we're doing as five instructors is we are administering the project onto you. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. We live in this till the day that we die. Survival of the fit only the strong survive. Still we live in this till the day that we die. Survival of the fit only the strong survive. Welcome to Steve Says episode number. 113 and yeah i was turning around on purpose i wasn't turning my back on you or being rude or disrespectful that's just showing you the back of this awesome freaking shirt which is actually what we're going to be talking about here about this suck fest running event that we did this saturday that's really what we're going to be talking about on this episode steve says episode number 113 and i'm getting asked the question because this type of challenge that we just did this weekend it was uh, equivalent to running more than a marathon and doing more than 4,000 reps of exercise. You basically run two tenths of a mile, you do 30 reps of two, 15 reps of two different exercises, right back to another two tenths of a mile for 135 rounds. And then we did some extra even after that. So this is nothing new. The Freak family, if you've been following us, you know we do a monthly fundraiser, 24 hour challenge pretty much every single month. We've done hikes and weightlifting and bike rides and video game challenges, 24 hour challenges. So this is nothing new. So I get asked, why would you beat yourself up physically with these different monthly challenges like you did, like this one we just did right here this, this weekend? And that's what we're going to talk about here. Why? Why would you do this to yourself? Why, would you, why the fuck would you do it to yourself? And this week, we're going to talk about the takeaways, the lessons learned, and the breakthroughs during this suck fest workout. Steve says, each week here, this is now episode 113, holy crap, now I've been a, a years of doing this, is... Not always what you need to hear, but this is definitely the shit that you want to hear. What's up from Richmond, Virginia? We got you on all different kinds of screens, like six different freaking cameras going around here. So I'm trying to keep up to date with it. If you have a question, comment, put them in the comments there around the video and we will talk about it. But Steve says, as you know, some people will hate, but most can relate. We are bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. This is a live show on how to have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success in your health, your family, and your finances so you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own freaking terms. This is all about the mind, the body, the business. If you follow along weekly, you know there are five different types of live shows we do throughout the week here. Steve does is about health, fitness, nutrition. Steve knows is about business, sales, marketing. Steve says right here is about personal development, mindset. And then there's also the Russia and the Freak, which is about putting together a family and a business and relationships all together at the same time. And then, of course, on Wednesdays is breaking the cycle with the Freak kids and myself talking about how to have a role model mindset, how to be a positive male role model in this crazy, messed up world that we got here. So those are the different types of live shows. This is, Steve says, about how to operate, to dominate in your discipline, your energy, your confidence, how to be an action taker, a risk taker, a bold move maker, and be your freak self at all times. That's what this is about. It's about personal development. It's about the mind, the brain, and then the body and the business will all follow along once you get along. So let's jump into it. I get asked, I get asked regularly, why would you do to yourself? That's yourself. I, I get asked that. Why would you put yourself through so much pain and suffering? And, and not just once in a while thing. Not just once in a while thing. We're talking about on a regular basis. A regular basis. And this, this week, we, we did this Suckfest workout, which was equivalent to over a marathon worth of running and thousands and thousands of reps, hundreds of sets of reps. Literally, if you do 135 times two, so right there, 270 sets of reps mixed in with that. Just trying to read some of these comments. I don't even get what some of them mean down here on the Instagrams. But... Anyway, let's, let's, let's talk about this. Why would you do stuff like that? Why would you put yourself through this kind of suffering? And we're going to go over what were some of the takeaway lessons. But first, I'll tell you about some of this stuff. I can't do any exercise. Excellent. Uh, a, a couple of stories about this experience. And then we're going to talk about the takeaways and the 10 just top takeaways that came up just off the top of the head that I came up with preparing for the show. And if I, I go a little deeper and as I start journaling on this stuff, we'll go, it'll be many more to come. Now, this was a challenge that 
took us over nine hours to complete. Some people did it quicker. Some people took 14 to 15 hours to complete. This was, we ended up doing over 30 miles of running with over, over 4,200 reps or something when it came down to it with the extra rounds that we did and little freak shows, little 10 year old and the seven year old, they, they went through the whole thing. Tyson, 10 years old, went step for step with me the entire way. And it was freaking awesome. I mean, I'm talking about we we ran the entire way. Or or was it maybe it was me going step for step for him? I'm not sure which way it was. It was one way or the other. But uh it, it was freaking crazy. I, I maybe could have gone at a faster pace, but that's not what this was about. That's not what this is about. Of course, I could go and whatever. I'm expected to go get a decent run in or a decent time and, and not to be too crazy and too hard or whatever. But this was about finishing, doing this together as a freak family, starting it together, finishing it together, doing it as a team, doing it as an event, as a team, as a family. It's, think about it, if I just blaze and just take off and leave the, leave the kids behind and just to show them how cool I am and how fast I could go do this. Yeah, well, they'll be impressed for a second and they'll be like, well, wasn't that cool? You just left us behind or whatever. So it was freaking crazy. Cali Styles, what's up? Freak show. And so, sure, I could have finished much faster. But what, what's the point of that? The, so my, the kids and the family and, and, and to, to say, oh, wow, you're, you've been a, a personal trainer for 25 fucking years and you ran faster than us. Big fucking deal. Like, there's a time to lead from the front, a time to lead from the, the back, and there's a time to lead from in the trenches, in the suck, in the dirt and grime, carrying some of the weight on your shoulders. And that's a big lesson to learn in, in something like this is literally I stayed step for step with Tyson. We ran the entire time. We made it a goal. We're not going to do any walking because you you could walk it. You could run it. You see it during marathons. People do all the time. Every single step of the over 30 miles was freaking running, was running. Every single step, we made sure we're going to run it. We're not going to walk a single fucking step. I don't care if a bone is sticking out of my body. And you know what? For me to, to, to not be able to complete this, literally, literally, I'd have to be taken out in a, in a fucking, not even an ambulance, because it wouldn't work, in a fucking casket. I would crawl the rest if I had to. Imagine that. There with my, my kids and family, and then there with guys from the, men, men from the project. Men from the project that uh, I, I put through training and suffering and coaching and, and all this crazy stuff, and then I'm going gonna, I'm I'm gonna to drop out or something. Like, I would have to be, I'd have to be fucking dead for, to make that happen. Hold on, I gotta get on here and just see if I can block one of these little bitch ass motherfuckers on Instagram real quick. See some stupid comments just taken up. Where is it? Let's see if I could just block them. Cause it's easy, simple as that. Can you block on here? Yes, you can. Bam. All right. Just had to block this little bitch ass motherfucker out there on the Instagram. Simple as that. So you don't let things sidetrack you. There's another lesson for you to learn right here. When the haters come out, the shit talkers, the, the little bitch ass motherfuckers like this dude on Instagram right now just yapping away about, oh, I don't even know what he's saying. I'm not a read. It doesn't even matter. It's just block and delete and you move on. I can sit here and argue on the, on the internet with some little, little bitch. Not going to happen. So block, delete, later motherfucker. All right, so let's keep moving on. Now that we got rid of the bitch and any other, any other, you know, punk ass that want to come come in, we can just block you too. Now it's simple, it's so simple. That's how you know you're on the right path when you're doing things right. When people talk shit to you, when people try to drag you down, people try to lie and cheat and steal against you. You know, fuck yeah, I'm on the right path. I'm gonna do fucking ten times more than I'm doing. You don't like the way I talk. You don't like the way I walk. You don't like the way I dress. You don't like my two different color shoes. A big fuck you, and I'll keep rolling on, and I'll do it ten times more, a hundred times more. I will not just do it. I will overdo it. That's how you go. That's how you you do it. You keep marching the fuck along. So. Sure, maybe I could, all right, back to, back on track. Maybe I could have finished a little harder and could have tested myself, all right, how fast can I complete this? But does that really matter? Because think about it, you're doing reps of an exercise. You could just do like two pounds for the exercise and not challenge yourself in there so you could get a better run. So it really doesn't matter what time you finished in. It doesn't matter how fast I would have finished. It doesn't fucking matter. So, and it was still a test to be able to run the entire time because you know what? I've never ran more than 10 miles in a day 
I'm, I'm thinking about it. I've never did a marathon, a half a marathon. I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not into that whole long distance running thing. I do Marine Corps style running. We do three miles, we fucking attack it. Once in a while, you do a five or six miler, like a couple times a year. It's usually a mile or a three mile, like busting ass, pushing the pace, hitting those energy systems, and out, done. None of those hours and hours long. We got into some longer hikes and longer bike rides recently, but I've never ran more than 10 miles in a day. Tyson never ran more than five and a half miles at a time. And we hit over 30 motherfucking miles, just like that. And we didn't train for it. We didn't practice for it. We just went out there and, and fucking did it. So we ran every single step. Then the little midge did 22 something miles, over 22 miles at, at seven years old. And if I did over 60,000 or close to 60,000 steps, I can't even imagine how many steps she did. And then the Russian also completed her 27 miles, which was still more than a marathon. Like, think about that shit in, in a, 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 a short time period mixed with all his exercises. Fucking crazy. So once we finished, there was still Tyson and I finished. The Russian and the mid still had some time to go left. So I said, Tyson, you might see other people that finished and, and sit around. And that's great because it fucking sucks. Your knees are tw- tweaked and whatever else. Your hips are a little sore and whatever. Some people's feet are blistered up. So you got to sit down in the, in the fucking sit down and recover. I said, not us, Tyson. We're getting back out there. We're hitting back of the road. Especially our, our freak family's not even done. Then there's some other dudes that are not even done after them. So we go and we help. We go with the Russian till, till she finishes. We're done with that. So sorry to break the news to you, Tice. I know you did our 27 of running. We went and did some more running and some, some jogging out there with some other, with the Russian. Now the freak family is done, but I'm looking out there. I'm seeing a couple people out there still going at it alone. And that shit ain't going to fucking happen on my watch. It's just not going to happen. You're going to start together. You're going to fucking finish together. So we're going to get back out there. And at this point, Tyson could barely even, even fucking walk. I said, you know what? Stay here. I'm going to go get them. I'll finish them up. Take a little recovery. You come join me in a little bit. Take some, take some time off. Rehydrate. Eat a banana or some shit and come back on, back and back out if, if you want to. I'll go take care of from here. You can come join us. He's like, uh-uh, sucker. He's like, you ain't going to pull that bullshit on me. This little shit thought it was like a test. Thought it was like challenging him to, are you really going to do it? And I was really telling him like, shit, go sit down. Because I want to go sit down, but some, someone's got to go walk with these dudes. I'll take the hit. He's like, nah, motherfucker. You're going to get these extra miles? I'm going to get just as many extra miles as you. And this little shit went with me. Besides the fact, when we finished the 20, the last two tenths of the, of the 27 fucking miles running, this little shit, this little shit, we're backtracking a second. This little shit took off in an all-out fucking sprint. I don't know where he got this Usain Bolt speed from. And fucking took off in front of me. Because we were just jogging the last lap. We were like running. By that point, it's just like, all right, let's just finish this shit. We fucking took off. Hit this little, little shit took off. I said, all right, little partner, you're going to probably one day you're going to beat me. But today ain't that motherfucking day. So we're sprinting. Knees fucking cracking and bones grinding. Feet on fire. Fucking sprinting the last two tenths of a mile all out to the fucking finish line. And it was awesome. Wish we could have videotaped it. But we're too busy fucking running and trying not to collapse and fall over and and trip over each other that it wasn't recorded but whatever so we finished that we finished helping the russian not done yet part and we got to go out there there's still some dudes out there that we're going to go and help there's still some people we're going to go help and this is just how we fucking roll it's you leave no man behind it's it's just it's a basic common sense the way that i see it and so many lessons learned so many lessons learned and we, we, we would have, could have stayed there all night if we had to, to make it happen and just gone over and over. And I even asked Tyson at the end, like, what do you think we, what do you think we could, you could do this again? Like, we really were talking about, like, fuck yeah, we could do this again if we had to. Right fucking now if we had to. It would suck. It might, we might not be, it might not be pretty. We'll probably be hospitalized after or just torn the fuck up. But if we had to, we could do this all over again right fucking now. Like, what could really stop you? Think about it. What could stop you? So let's talk about some of those lessons. And I, and I kind of, so many things that I've just already said just by talking in these quick stories, you unpack some of those and there's tons of lessons to be had in a lot of that stuff. The first thing is you need to regularly have something out there in the not too distant future to challenge yourself. And then when you do have that challenge, make it fucking hard and make it even harder than it needs to be. You need to always have something looming over your head for you to always drive forward. 
We are humans, especially if you're a freak human. If you're a high performing freak show, if you're watching this, you're probably a fucking freak. So you need something out there, not once a year. You need something out there like at least once a quarter, probably even once a month, and even on a smaller basis, once a fucking week. Like Tyson and I were laughing, we we're going through this. It's called Suckfest 2. We we're laughing like this is fucking Suckfest like 317 for us because we, you, we need this all the time. We need that pressure and stress of knowing that there's something out there that we have to go and do soon. And that's the shit that makes you wake up early in the morning and light a fire under your ass and just motivate you, make you fucking hungry and disciplined and full of fucking energy. Makes you get good sleep. Makes you work fucking hard and have lazy being focused. You need to challenge yourself, put it out there on the calendar. Whether or not you make it publicly known or not, I don't really give a shit if you have to tell other people to make you for the accountability, whatever you want to do, that's up to you. But put it on the calendar and, and have that pressure looming over your head, knowing that this date is coming up. Now, imagine having that once a month. So you're always on your A game. We have a saying, if you're always on your A game, you never have to get on your A game. We didn't fucking train at all for this thing. We ran maybe a couple of times before we did this, this 30-something miles. Because you're, if you're always on your A game, you never have to get on your A game. Back in when we, when we had our gyms in New York, I used to teach a free boxing class every single Thursday. And we still do them sometimes here. But I used to teach a free boxing class every Thursday. I had a personal training client that, that was, was doing a training session with me earlier that day on Thursday. He said, listen, one of the, the high-level people in, the, in the, the county's board of education is coming, like this big, big whatever, high-ranking official from the, the town, the county, or state, or some shit is coming. So make sure you give them a really good tri- workout today in the, in, the, in the free boxing class. I said, listen, partner, you don't have to tell me shit. If you're always on your A game, you have to get on your A game. It's a free class, first of all, but I don't give a shit if it's free. I don't care if one person shows up. I don't care if one million people show up. They are going to get the fucking fire. They are going to feel the thunder. We are going to bring the fucking fire every second of every second, no matter fucking what. So if you're, if you're always thinking like that, it, it, it makes it so easy when you have something, you, you throw that spear out there, a spear of fucking purpose out there that lands out there sometime, somewhere it's out in the month. Now you know, fuck, I have this coming up. I better start taking my recovery serious. I better start taking my training serious. I better start taking my nutrition, my sleep serious. And, that, and while you're staying that sharp and disciplined, fitness and nutrition and training and doing hard shit is the fucking, one of the, the foundations of success in all other areas of life. It will give you the discipline, the motivation, the fucking energy, the durability in business to build a, a, a fucking empire, to build a multi-million dollar company. I have a a private coaching client, a one-on-one coaching client in in an OTD one-on-one coaching, which is operate to dominate in your mind, your body, and your business. It's high-level one-on-one coaching. And as we started, I'm stressing the fact of his fitness and nutrition. Like we're going deep and granular. We're like on on that for weeks and months. It's always a portion of our our coaching. It's I'm, I'm requiring seven days a week interaction with him on his fitness and his training, his coaching. That's what accountability is. Imagine having my ass on you seven days a week. That's what happens to OTD one-on-one coaching. So this is now, he's now been with me for over a year on this high-level coaching. And he said, listen, there's something I have to tell you that when we first started, I knew you came from a personal trainer background. I thought it was just, you were just pushing the agenda of fitness and nutrition because that's the background you came from. And now I see like, you knew what the fuck you were saying about this is the foundation of like, Fucking life and, and business is like, you need to take care of yourself first. You need to lead yourself first before you can lead someone else. So all that was balled up into challenge yourself, make shit harder, put shit on the calendar that you have to look forward to, that you, you will keep you sharp and keep you focused and keep you on your fucking A games. You bring the fucking fire every second. You wake up in the morning and you're just off to the races every day, no matter what. And you will take all these areas of your life seriously. That was just number one. Fuck, we got to get to 10 of them. And I'm sitting here battling on. Maybe the dickhead that I blocked was right. And I need to shut up. So number two is that don't cut corners. Integrity fucking matters. And operate with that role model mindset all the time, especially when you're with your kids. But even more importantly, when you're by your fucking self. There were, this, this challenge was up to you. To You had your own sheet. I don't have it here. I would have shown you the sheet. It's somewhere, somewhere in the house. I think we're framing the sheets. Of You marked off every time you did a lap. It was 135 laps of of 0.2 miles, 
135 laps, which makes it 27 miles. Every time you check it off. There were a few times where we did our set, lap, set, lap, like consecutive without going back because our card was in the back of the room. We were going out the front door, so we didn't get to it. And a couple of times we had to mark off like two or three at a time because we did that many laps. And we got there. We're like, shit, was that four rounds or was that five that we just did in a row? And we're like, I don't, I don't know. I said, you know what? When in doubt, we're fucking going down. So we put it as four. So when it came down to it, I am certain we missed a lot of sets and reps. And listen, when, you, when it gets fucking bad and your knees are grinding and you fucking want to be done, like you had enough. We're talking about nine and a half hours straight of fucking training. Nine and a half hours. Nonstop. Me and a Russian and a 10-year-old and a 7-year-old and then 50 other freaks that were there with us and hundreds of people from around the world. But just talking about me and, and, and the, the family, we were doing this side by side. When it gets fucking tough and shit starts hurting, it becomes pretty easy for men, even high-performing good men, to cut some corners. If no one else knows, sometimes it's like, fuck, this sucks. And I'll tell you what, we didn't, we, only, we didn't walk at all. We ran the whole time. We passed a lot of people. Some people finish at different times. And I think sometimes people negotiate with that inner bitch and give into it. And integrity fucking matters. Integrity fucking matters. I said it, especially imagine I'm there with Tyson and I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just mark a couple of extra on so we can get this over with. Imagine if I did that with him. Like, my credibility is shot. That kid becomes a fucking crackhead one day. Just from something like that. Like, the chain of events that happened after that. Seeing his, his role model, his hero, his fucking dad. Who he wants to be like. Fucking shaves his head to be like me. Imagine I did that shit. No, no, no. Fuck that. We're gonna, if we're in, when in doubt, we're gonna go back and we're gonna redo it. We're gonna make sure that there is no fucking question whether or not we did this amount. So we're gonna fucking, not gonna do it. We're gonna over fucking do it as I mentioned earlier. And then when we're done, we're going to also go back and see, we're not leaving any man behind. So that's, that's, that was number, number, fuck, that was only number two. Don't cut corners. Integrity matters. Number three, you always have more left in the fucking tank. There's always reserve. Listen, you're down and out and you think you're out of the fight. Like that fucking sprint that we, that we did. I don't know. We had it in reserve that we were fucking moving, fucking moving. There are always reserves in the tank. And once you use up the re- those reserves, guess what? Guess what, motherfucker? There is still more reserves to tap into even after that. You are never out of the fucking fight. That's the next thing. There is always more in the fucking tank. You have always more of you to give. We're not talking about just fit- fitness. Obviously, that's the kind of analogy and example we're using. But you always have more to fucking give in your time and energy and attention and intention with your family in your business you always have more to give you're never doing enough no matter what you're fucking doing you are not doing enough you're not making enough calls you're not trying to sell hard enough you're not making enough impact you're not creating enough value you can always do fucking more in all areas of life number four was don't just worry about yourself even though you're suffering and in severe pain listen we already know we can handle. We do that. We do that. This dumb shit all the fucking time. We know we can handle it. Like I asked Tyson before we started, I'm like, you gonna be able to make this? It's like, yeah. Like you gonna be able to run the whole thing? It's like, yeah. Motherfucker never ran more than five and a half miles in his life, and I'm asking if he's gonna be able to run 27 over nine and a half hours, mixing all these exercises in with it. He says, yeah. Fuck yeah. Because. We already know we could deal with it. It's like, you're just, you build yourself for this. You, you fucking bust your ass all the time if you're always scheduling the hard shit like I talked about earlier. So don't just worry about yourself. Even though we were in, we were, we were, we were having some aches and pains and shit fucked up and hobbling and whatever else. But we already know we can handle it. So deal with it. Suck it the fuck up. Don't be a little bitch. And do what you have to do to then go and help someone else. Even at your own fucking expense. Go and help someone else. Because there are always, always someone off worse off than you. There's always someone. And the, and the same thing goes with, with all areas of life. I want you to take these things about this, this, this discipline of, and energy of fitness and put that into all areas of life. That's always what we're doing here, what we're talking about. Is know that there's always people worse off than you. And you're thinking you're having such a bad day because 
You didn't close any deals. You lost all the sales. You screwed something up. You whatever. You missed something. You fucked something up. I do that sometimes. And I'm thinking, damn, that sucks. I, I, I missed, I didn't close this deal today. I didn't get a new client here. I didn't sell the project or whatever else. And this and that. And this, you're getting a complaint from this client and this business and all these different things going on in all these different directions, all these different businesses. And then it's like, motherfucker, shut up. Shut the fuck up. Stop being a little bitch. Complaining that you're having issues in like three, four, five different companies. Come on. Like there's always people worse off than you. One of your missions and goals in life is as you are striving to get better and grow and, and reach different levels every fucking day. You don't, you do that without being at the expense of other people. I mean, you don't have to douchebag on the way. You're not kicking people and, and doing slimy, sleazy shit on the way up. You're using with high morals and values as you're doing that. And then also while you're doing that is take people along for the ride with you. Help people along the way. It's your fucking duty and obligation as a motherfucking man, as a human. It's your job. Which leads us into number five. Leave no freaks behind. We talked about that already. We went back around. Extra laps, extra fucking miles in severe pain because we know we can handle it. Even at our, your own expense. You leave no fucking man behind. It's simple. Marine Corps 101 motherfucking one. It's man 101. It's life 101. It's human motherfucking 101. Number six is always go the extra mile. And we say it all the time. But here in, the, in this challenge... This was a fucking literal sense. Like, go the extra fucking mile. Go above and beyond the call of duty. Always do more because you know you can. You're built for this shit. You've done it before. There's other people that have it worse than you. You're not going to leave anyone behind. Go the motherfucking extra mile. In everything you do. In your business. With your finances. With your donating. With charities you go to. Go the fucking extra mile. Donate your time. Donate your money. It's, it's so easy how to get ahead in this world. Don't expect something for nothing. Do more than you're paid for and always go the motherfucking extra mile. Simple shit. Number seven is don't be a little bitch. We covered this many times already in probably 10 different ways already today. Don't be a little bitch. You're going to survive. You're going to recover. You need to find out who the fuck you really are and what the hell you're actually made of. Don't be a little bitch. It's simple. Don't be a little bitch. You're going to survive. The knees will get better. If my knees were fucked up and I had this glute hamstring, embarrassingly enough, like all the way up where your hamstring gets your glute, like deep, deep in there under the butt cheek was so bad starting this to go into this. You know where it happened from? Our 24-hour video game challenge from me sitting down too much. Fucking strain something in there. It's been there for like a week because that was only a week ago and it didn't get any better. I still worked out every day, still did my deadlifts and squats. Still trained the whole week. Going into this thing, this thing was bad. I had a little hobble starting this workout it's going to fucking heal. Blisters are going to heal. Even motherfucking wounds and scabs and scrapes and broken motherfucking bones are going to heal. Your body's meant to heal. It regenerates itself. We're like fucking real life wolverines when you think about it. Don't be a little bitch. You will survive. You will recover. Even maybe if sometimes it takes longer than others. You'll fucking recover from a little boo-boo, a little owie. Like, don't be a little fucking bitch. Number eight. I already said it. Take others along for the ride with you. Help others out on your journey to fucking domination. It ain't just about yourself. You try to do it, your, you try to do it alone here in this world, on this fucking rock that's spinning around, you're going to be fucked. You're going to be doomed. You're never going to get anywhere in motherfucking life. Take others along for the ride with you. I already kind of touched on that already. Number nine, operate to dominate in everything you fucking do. Would we have liked to finish first? Yeah, we're trying to. We're looking around, who's walking, who's not walking, who's running, who's keep going, who's ahead of us, who's faster than us, who's laps ahead of us, who do we pass that is somehow laps ahead of us? Sure, we're fucking trying to dominate. You know the story, you know it, we go out to get the mail, we go out to get the mail like fucking madmen, we are brawling in the streets, who's going to get the mail, who's going to come back in with the mail, something as simple like that, you heard it, how you do anything is how you do everything, you're gonna, you're, if you're going to sweep floors, sweep the floor like a motherfucker. Operate to dominate in fucking everything in life, in your mind, your body, and your business. And number 10, of course, number 10, of course, no excuses. Never make any and never accept any. No matter what, we were going to finish this thing no matter what. It was not going to be an excuse that was going to stop us. It had nothing to do with running, had nothing to do with a marathon, had nothing to do with any, any challenge or cool t-shirt. Pretty fucking cool t-shirt, huh? Check that out. Nothing to do with any of that shit. 
has to do with just who the fuck we are and what we stand for as freak motherfucking family. That's what creates our freak freedom. These 10 things I just went over. And, and I could sit and we can go in and talk about this for hours and hours and hours. But then the little douchebag that I blocked over on Instagram would pop up and start telling me to shut up again and that I'm lying and all this other stuff. It's, some fucking bitch ass motherfuckers on the internet, huh? No excuses. Never make any, never accept any. That's my takeaways. If you did this training session with us, I want you to put down in the comments down below or send me a message. What were some of your takeaways? What were your aha moments? What were your breakthroughs? Because we have a saying, break down to break through. You're going to, you have to break yourself down physically so you could have breakthroughs mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, and even fucking financially. That's what it's all about. And listen, all these things we're talking about, all these points we talked about, each one of these are high level, deeper coaching opportunities. Like if you need help in any of these areas, if you need help in your mindset, in your body, in your business, let's talk about one-on-one, operate to dominate, private, personal development, and discipline coaching. It's the highest level there is, but on top of that, stay tuned coming up in the next couple weeks for the Freak Mode 40. It's a daily discipline habit challenge coming up. 40-day challenge coming up. This is in a couple weeks. Look out for it. It's going to be a game changer. This is going to be next level when it comes to taking your life and your habits and your disciplines to a whole new area that you never even thought was possible. Like this shit is going to completely transform and change your life. So look out for this. It's the Freak Mode 40 coming in a couple of weeks. If you need help on a higher level, on a one-on-one level, let me know. We have tons of coaching options for one-on-one from online OTD to just one-on-one on video sessions, and also even one-on-one in-person coaching sessions. So let me know if you need help with any of that on the coaching side. We will talk about it. Also, of course, you know about the project. Next class coming up in February is just about sold out. There's one or two spots left. Let me know if you want in on that. All these are just different forms of coaching. They're all forms of coaching in your mind, your body, and your business. So send me a message. We'll jump on the phone. We'll have an interview call to talk about which, which program will be the best fit for you, for your lifestyle, for your personality, and for your career, and for your goals. I will talk to you later. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses. See some of you in your faces right now. You're ready to quit, but you can't. All we're doing as five instructors is we are administering the project onto you. Do you understand that? We live in this till the day that you die. Survival does the only the strong survive. We live in this till the day that you die. Survival of the only strong